A big thanks to EA Game Changers for the opportunity to play Roma Magic over the weekend. The pack isn't bad, but I'm annoyed I can cover so many shortcuts in one video. Sims is not expected to be difficult, but with some of these things, it's outright too easy. First, the obvious. Head through the portal and look at this big, strangely plain house and talk to one of the sages with the floating symbol over their head. This place is Magic HQ. The game actually calls it that. <laughs> and sages can give you a quickie quest to turn your sim into a spellcaster. I mean quick. You pick up the moats, then turn them into the sage, and bam, you're a caster. It takes 60 seconds tops. Everybody's a caster. Even Belagoth. Once you've started, you can begin to learn right away. If you're eager for spells, start building a friendship with the three sages and they'll give you potion recipes and spells every few hours. If you gather all three of them in a group conversation, you can get like six in a couple hours if your level's high enough. There are only 39 of them, so five times and you're nearly there. Once you're an acquaintance, they basically never say no. Have your way with them and exploit their generosity. It's impossible not to, knowing there is a spell dispenser available. While there are tons of ways to learn spells, the best way other than kissing sage ass is to click your own sim, use the magic menu, and go for one of the three schools. Practicing like this becomes super helpful when you're only missing a few spells, because all but one from each school can be learned this way, and it doesn't take very long to pick up a new ability. A few perks are particularly great for helping you rank up as a caster. All three on the side with no prerequisites? Since you can get every single perk and perk resets are super simple to obtain, you might as well just get an even bigger advantage of knocking out that spellbook. No matter what you do, there is a way to speed up research and increase XP gains at the same time. One of them gives you a few socials which you can use on the sages again that build friendship but also give witch XP. You can spend a lot of time standing around talking to sages. The Adept rank allows you to get the Spectral Reach perk, assuming you grab the other two. You can now set sims on fire or turn them into inanimate objects, so long as they're just in the neighborhood. No matter being five levels down in a basement, this was this one does not make me angry. It's cool, <laughs> except there's really no point to it. There's no purpose to this tournament other than your own sick enjoyment. If making sims sad makes you happy, you got it. Experimenting on cauldrons can give you potion recipes. If you run into a message about there being no more recipes available for your level, switch tactics and focus on spellcaster experience. I would personally stay away from cauldrons until level 2 or 3 of spellcaster. The entire purpose of experiment is to learn new potions, but it can fail and may cause you to get a curse. A few potion recipes may require the assistance of the sages, but you can learn most of them on your own. But maybe you should just ask the sages for potion recipes, since they never say no. Because you utterly suck at magic, you're very likely to get cursed by your own spells or bungling something at the cauldron. You should hit up the shop in town every now and then to see if any potions of curse cleansing are available for sale. Curses can be funny, but they are definitely disruptive. There's a curse called the Curse of Unwarranted Hostility, referred to in the game code as Punchable Face, that results in Sims attacking you. Another turns you green at random times and your appearance is so bad that Sims will literally vomit at the sight of you. Curses and the way they're done is generally cool by me and I wish we had more like it. Long lasting troubles you have to overcome. But once you get the decursify spell, that's over. Yes, you can choose not to use it, but everything is always left up to me. 
The other shopkeepers in Harry Potter inspired Caster's Alley sell ingredients that can be used for potions. Only one potion is absolutely ridiculous in what it does, and it's a level one potion. The potion of plentiful needs takes just one apple to give you four servings of a potion that completely fills your needs. Four servings, one apple. Insane. Just buy two or three fruit seed starter packs from a computer or garden planner and you're good to go. You will never poop again unless you somehow forget about this insanely OP ability. If you do things right, you'll eventually only ever walk short distances. You can teleport in one of two ways in Realm of Magic, either with a broom, which is what the noob casters use, or the wonderful teleportate spell from the master casters. Both of these can be set as your default movement. Brooms don't seem to work indoors, but the teleportation certainly does. What's more, it has no range and doesn't seem to increase charge much, so have at it. <sighs> Familiars. I want to bring these up because people were super excited about them. Well, some people. There aren't differences in Familiars, so a rare one isn't better in some way. They don't really do anything most of the time. Just give a plus one confident moonlit when you're around or speak some words of encouragement. I was rather hoping you could upgrade them or that there would be even minor differences. You can tag a cat or dog as familiar too. The cats and dogs can hunt for items for you, but it's hardly necessary. When they're in familiar mode, they stand behind you sparkling and make noises while you work. They watch everything you do, but since you use Plentiful Needs Potion, it should exclude bathroom activities. I do need to know if they go away when you woohoo or if they stick around. Familiars do have a function in that they can absorb a killing blow on your sim. If you end up using this, know that there is a one week cooldown before they can do it again. I like that. I don't know that it's tied to a particular familiar. Maybe you should test it. <laughs> Just say first. On the subject of death, we do have a new death, and you can avoid it. Get the discharge perk from this skill tree if you want to gain caster XP actually spamming your spells. This lets you clear out your charge meter about once every eight hours. Being overcharged is not what it's cracked up to be. You get there by doing magical activities with most things contributing at least a little charge with high rank spells contributing more. When you get overcharged, spells are supposedly more powerful, but it's just more likely to blow up in your face, do nothing on some spells, or give a tiny duration boost to an emotional spell. Pay attention to the meter too. Don't be me, don't let this happen to your simp. This time he was okay, but not the first time I tried, which is about the same, but let's watch it anyway. Something for later, if you want to build an interesting home, know that you can buy the portals used in the magic realm with bb.showhiddenobjects. And if you buy entrance one with exit one, they will correctly connect even on your home lot, allowing your sims to teleport. You could make a great multi-story home and never use the stairs. Personally, I want some kind of wizard tower that has no stairs, but for now, I just tested it in a basement. The only problem is they forgot to let you lock them. Please, Maxis, fix this. And that's over 10. I don't mean to be too hard on Roma Magic. I just feel like it needed a bit more time and thought. A few points bugged me after expressing my excitement to you all. I have a lot more to say. There's plenty of stuff I love, especially in Build By. A lot of it has a fantastic look to it, and it really fits in. It wasn't used very well in the buildings that exist, however. Especially the Magic HQ. I will state directly to the fans who make it all the way through, I'm a bit less excited about the spells and how easy they are to get. 
It's a negative for me because I felt good spells were pivotal to its success, but the pack has, in general, been entertaining just too easy. Spellcasters make it pointless to ever be a scientist again because all the cool powers they have are now included in caster, plus a lot more. No need for ambrosia, potions of youth, anything like that. Several of the high-end reward traits from the store are also useless to spellcasters. It's not like I care that spellcasters are OP. I expect him to be the most powerful occult. There it is. I was hoping for entirely new spell effects and mechanics that don't yet exist. Not the reuse of many of them. And I'm just getting spells and potion recipes so fast it's overwhelming and I can't believe how quick they get to where they can do nothing but grind without concern for food or toilet ready. I know some of you want a vampire hybrid caster but it's hardly necessary and actually would introduce weaknesses you just don't have. Anyway, we know there will probably be a mod for this in a week for the PC players. I'm considering the werewolf, actually, and I just heard about that. A werewolf mod. Hmm. The guide has a spells list, caster guide, and Roman magic cheats already. I'll link to them in the description. Thanks for watching, and look for more extensive coverage from me later this week. Our Patreon is in the description, too, if you'd like to support the channel or my site. Have a nice week.